Hi Trigoners, welcome to day five. This is applications of add and multiply probabilities. So this is just extending what we did last week. Example one, flip a penny, nickel, and dime. Answer the questions that follow and record your answers in the table. Write the outcome for flipping one time. So if each of these coins are flipped, if it's zero tails, that means it is 10, 10 cents. One tail can happen a few different ways. Two tails. and three tails. And because each flip has a one half chance of occurring, we could see that this is one eighth, because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is one out of the eight ways. This one is three eighths, this one is three eighths, and this one is one eighth. And another way to see this is that the probability is one half times one half times one half. It is head and head and head. And the word that I'm using between is and, which from last week we learned that is multiply. In the one tail situation, it's one half times one half times one half, but there are three different ways for that to happen. So you can multiply by three and you end up getting three eighths. There are three different ways of getting one half and one half and one half. Likewise, for two tails, and we're back to one half cubed. I've gone ahead and graphed our probability distribution. I've gone ahead and graphed our probability distribution for us. Um, because this is a problem that we've seen before. Um, so I'm going to move forward with the questions. Calculate the probability that exactly two are heads. So because this probability distribution was made with tails, um, I have to look at this as if there are two heads, that's the same thing as if there is one tail, and that probability is three eighths. At least two are heads. So that's two heads or three heads. And that's the same thing as one tail or zero tails. And so you're going to be adding probabilities because of the word or. You're satisfied with more things. So three eighths plus one eighth is four eighths, which is one half. The probability of getting zero, one, two, or three heads is all of the possibilities. And so you're adding up these probabilities which makes one. It's all of the values within our probability distribution. The probability of getting four heads is zero because we're only flipping the coins the three different times. You can't possibly get four. Example two, if you flip a thumbtack, it can come out either up or down. Suppose that the probability of up on any one flip is 0.7. What is the probability of the thumbtack landing down? So if the flip for up is 0.7, that means 0.3 is the probability for the thumbtack landing down because all I'm doing is the complement idea from last week, which is to do 1 minus 0.7. I'm going to skip the prediction and just go through flipping the thumbtack three times. So 0 up means 3 down. You, you take a second and write out all the combinations. Okay, so now I want us to realize that yes, there are eight different situations that can happen, but because the probabilities of flipping up and down are not the same, this is a harder problem to do than the one on the other side. So you're going to have to go through the calculations more precisely. So down, down, down will be 0.3 times 0.3 times 0.3, and I'm going to use a shorter notation to do this. 
one up can happen three different ways. <clears throat> and each of those probabilities has one up and two downs. And because you need an up and a down and a down, that's why I'm multiplying. And so this is the shorthand notation. The probability is 0.189. Notice that one up and two up are going to have a different probability because of what's being squared. And the last one, three ups, will be 0 0.343. I've graphed the probability distribution just so that you can visually see that the likelihood of getting two ups is the one that's most like most likely to happen out of the three different four different options. Let's go forward with the questions. Calculate the probability of getting exactly two that are down. So exactly two that are down is the same thing as getting one up, and that probability is 0.189. The probability that at least two are down is two down or three down. And going back to the context of the question, that's the same thing as one up or zero up. And because it's an or, you're going to add those two probabilities. So 0.027 plus 0.189 is 0.216. The probability of getting three down is the same thing as zero up. So 0.027. All of these are all the possibilities, so that should add up to one. At least one up is one up or two up, or three up. And that phrase, at least, is really important because it makes us understand that it's everything except for none. So one minus the probability of getting zero up will be one minus 0 0.027, which is 0.973. Compare examples one and two, what are the similarities and differences? For both problems, you're flipping something three times, um, but because the heads and tails probabilities in the first example are exactly the same, like the probability of getting a head is one half and the probability of getting tails is one half, then the probability of getting two heads is equal to the probability of getting two tails. They were exactly the same. But when you flip the thumbtack, landing up was greater. Therefore, the probability of getting two up is greater than the probability of getting two downs, just as we've seen here in our probability distribution. But it came from the same idea. We're flipping something three times. But the unequal probabilities of a situation occurring makes these probabilities a little bit different. I'm going to skip example three, and I'm going to go to example four. A short multiple choice test has four questions. Each question has five choices, exactly one of which is right. Will he make it? Has not studied for the test, so he guesses at random. What is his probability of guessing any one answer right? So the one answer right is one fifth or 0.2, which means that the percent getting it wrong would be 80% or four fifths or 0.8. Now in this problem, this is sort of like flipping a coin or flipping a, a thumbtack four times instead of it being three times like we've already done. So zero right would be wrong, 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 and wrong. I'm going to give you some time to fill out the outcomes and then we can talk through the probabilities. So here are the different outcomes. And if you notice, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 different outcomes but they're not all gonna have the same probabilities because the probability of getting uh, a question right and the question wrong are different probabilities. So looking at zero right, it's the same thing as four wrong. The probability of getting a question wrong is 0.8, but we have to do that on four different questions. So it'll be 0.8 to the power of four. For one right, there's the probability of getting one right. This represents the probability of getting three wrong because you are definitely answering four questions. 
But if you notice, there's one, two, three, four different ways that that can happen. And so it's either this way or that way or that way or that way. And that, is, that satisfies you into getting one question right. Getting two right. So this calculation represents right and right. This calculation represents wrong and wrong. But notice how many ways that there are to get that sequence. And it could be six different ways that all have the exact same probability. And that's why you can add those all up, multiplying by six. The next situation can happen four ways. And the last situation can only happen one way. If you notice the exponents on point eight decrease by one, you could rewrite this one as point eight to the power of zero, because we know that that makes one. Point eight to the power of zero is one, so it doesn't change anything. So going down, the probabilities decrease by one. And on the point twos, these, these exponents increase by one. With the same argument, you could have said this is point two to the power of zero. Perform a calculation that shows your answer to part B is reasonable. All of those probabilities would have to sum to one because they represent all of the possible ways to do this. I'm going to skip graphing the probability distribution um, just for the sake of time and go down here. Willie passes the test if he gets at least three answers right. So three answers right is three right or four right. And you can decide how you want to make, like, do that calculation. I'm just going to add the probabilities. So that is three right plus. Four right, and that makes 0 0.028. In summary, the similarity in all the examples is that you have something happening in only two options. Heads and tails, thumbtack was up or down, here we have right and wrong, and so you associate a situation with only two different options of occurring. Now that those outcomes may happen in different ways because you're doing something three times or you're doing something four times, but within each of those times, there are really only two options for occurring. Have a good day, you guys.